Because next week, MSPs will reconvene after the summer recess and we will hear from the Scottish Government about their programme for government. And this will be the first time that Hamza Youssef has delivered a programme for government. But it will be the last chance for the First Minister to step out of the shadow of his discredited predecessor and show Scotland that he's his own man. Because Scotland faces significant challenges. Despite welcome early signs that inflation is beginning to fall, our economy remains fragile. Our National Health Service is at breaking point, with one in seven Scots waiting for treatment. Our education system continues to fall down international rankings. Our transport system fails so many communities right across the country, with ferries delayed by more than half a decade and road upgrades that were promised a decade and a half ago. And in our councils, local services in all 32 local authorities remain cut to the bone. The Scotland we live in today is unsustainable. Despite the efforts of hard-working staff, our essential services are on their knees, reeling from one crisis after another. None of us can afford for things to go on as they are. I'm sick and tired of the SNP whining that they don't have the financial levers at their disposal to make a difference. Hamza Youssef has a £60 billion budget. He has total control over our devolved public services. And it's time that the SNP did more with these powers than manage to climb and use taxpayers' money to campaign for independence. Uh, the North Sea oil and gas industry. Uh, I was very proud to stand alongside the Prime Minister uh, just a few weeks ago when he was up in Aberdeenshire announcing uh, more investment in carbon capture and storage uh, and giving a, a very strong positive signal uh, to that industry, which is the complete opposite from every other political party in Scotland who want to shut down oil and gas uh, in the North, e North Sea as quickly as possible, not only putting tens of thousands of jobs at risk, but also putting at risk our energy security. While there continues to be demand, we should want to get the oil and gas as close to home as possible, which is cheaper, with the taxation going into our own treasury and with a lower carbon footprint. So that type of investment, I think, uh, can be uh, and will continue to be supported by decisions of the UK government, but here in Scotland we need an economy that is welcoming to that, and we don't have that with the current SNP Green government. And I actually think in many areas across Scotland, the closer we get to an election and people can see that we are the only alternative to the SNP MP, then more people will come to support us. Because what I picked up throughout the summer, both locally and when I've been touring different parts of the country, in the north, east, down in the south uh, of Scotland as well, is people uh, are not happy with the direction of travel from Hamza Yusuf. They are not happy with how the SNP are prioritising independence above everything else when their priorities uh, are ensuring uh, that we can deal with the cost of living crisis, we can get our NHS uh, back up to levels that we all um, expect and deserve and our education system uh, delivers for young people. So these are the key areas that people want to hear from and of course uh, a strong economy with economic recovery at the heart of it. What they've heard from Hamza Youssef is line one, page one of an SNP manifesto will be about independence. That's completely the wrong priority. And the closer we get to a general election, I think more people will see in many seats across Scotland that it's only the Scottish Conservatives that can challenge the SNP on those issues.